Well, behind me, the Mexican police just tried to shake me down. And they kept saying, money, money, dinero, dinero. And I said, nope, I ain't got no money for you. And they kept pointing that money in their hand and kept asking me to give them money. And I said, nah, bruh. Then they tried to shake a brother down. Mexico, dog. Mexico, golly. So, how did I get here? Well, if you guys remember at the end of my last El Salvador video, I mentioned that I would not return to El Salvador until I could import a vehicle into their country. So, fast forward a couple months, I go to Norfolk, Virginia, and I look at, you know, a less than eight-year-old vehicle because that's the rules for El Salvador. If you want to bring a car into the country, the car has to be less than eight years old. And lo and behold, I find myself a Dodge. Oh, I know what you're going to say. A Dodge? Yes, a Dodge. A 2017 Dodge Journey. And yes, I know. I know those cars have a lot of problems, but it's 2017, it's less than eight years old, it's only around seven years old, so I'm thinking maybe, you know, Dodge has fixed its issues throughout the years, and maybe the 2017 model is okay. So, I copped it. I went ahead and purchased it, and, you know, I spent some time with it, decided to fix it up, change the transmission fluid, make sure any odds and ends were perfect because what I was going to do, I was getting ready to embark on a plus 60 hour journey from Virginia all the way to El Salvador. And man, I tell you, it was a journey. No, not the Dodge journey, a journey. From Virginia, I had to drive all the way through Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Mexico, Guatemala, and then eventually El Salvador. But I made some stops along the way. Once I got to Texas, I went ahead and stopped at my first Walmart after sleeping in the parking lot because I was too cheap to purchase a hotel all the way from Virginia. Ahora mismo estoy en Houston, Texas, yendo a Walmart. There goes a Whataburger right behind me. Whataburger. <laughs> So, once I got to the Walmart, I decided to get some water and have a little fun. Hit me. I got greens, browns, pretzels, brownies, potatoes, greens, you name it. And after this Walmart excursion, I went ahead and spent some time with my peeps from Katy, Texas. I stayed in a hotel for a couple of days and met them, and we went back to Houston to have a little fun. It was a great time, I tell you. And then from there, my peoples from Katy decided to, you know, give me a couple of things so I could bring to El Salvador in the car, because it's easier to bring it in a car than it would be on a plane. So I obliged, and I said, okay, why not? Va pues. Now I'll show you how I got to where I ended up and what happened to me in Mexico. Orale. All right guys, here at the Los Indios Ferry Bridge here in Brownsville, Texas. I went to that pavilion right over there and that's where I got my stamp for export for this Dodge Journey. They just stamped my title and they stamped uh, the export information from AES Direct. I had to go to AES Direct after receiving an EIN number from the US. And then once I did that, I filled it out and allowed me to export it no issues. I got my stamp and now I'm going through the bridge here at CBP, Free Trade Bridge, Los Indios, Texas. All right, so let's see what Mexico has to offer for me. All right, passing that bridge, they made me pay $7.75 a toll to get into Mexico. Um, I didn't know I had to pay that, but I paid it. So now I'm driving to Mexico. So I'm stopped here right on this bridge trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Hold on. So um, I'm going to ask what these guys are waiting for because maybe they're waiting to get inspected. Who knows? So yeah. Hold up. Why is everyone waiting in this line? What? Why is everyone waiting right here with the with the cars, with the trucks? Porque todo esperar aquí. All right, confused because I see everyone waiting and I'm not trying to skip them, but these people are part of a group. They're doing flat toes and in tow. And they have all these, they're doing the same thing I'm doing, but they have like a group or something. So I don't really know if I was supposed to wait behind, but the guy was like, just go up. So I'm just going to go up. So super confused. I don't know how this works. So I don't even know. But 
Let me go my behind up in here and see if I can uh, get a temporary import permit in Mexico. I'm supposed to go here. Don't know if I'm supposed to go there. Bienvenidos a Mexico. I have no idea. So let me ask. Ah, so confusing. In Advance. All right, I'm supposed to turn here to the right. Don't go in. If you go in, they're going to make you turn around and pay $4. So you have to go to the Permiso Vehicular Permit. So I had to pay $4 because I took the wrong turn. And they're already giving me problems with the assignment of title. So it's like they want a single full title. So I'm already having issues. So I don't know if the guy's going to let me through. We'll see. Oh, my goodness. So my first shakedown just happened right here at the border. They're saying I should have just waited in that line because I'm actually exporting the vehicle. Okay, fine. But then I came in here and he's like, oh no, I can't accept your assignment of title because they gave me an assignment of title at the dealership. So he's like, you're gonna have to pay $150 more. And I was like, okay, well, I'll pay with a credit card. He's like, no, cash. But I can pay the other part with credit card. So they're already shaking me down. I already know I don't need no $150 and I know the assignment of title was perfectly fine, but they try to give me problems. So that's what's happening here at the border right after Los Indios. Shakedown 150. Yeah. 20, 20, 60, 20, All right, guys, so I got all my documents. I got everything signed. I don't know if this was really the right way. You know, he mentioned I should have waited in that long line, that long line behind me, and that should have a broker and all that stuff. And I don't really know if that's true because he stated that the guy, he said that I'm just transiting and I'm not a tourist. So if, being that I'm just transiting, I'm supposed to have gone through the long line and paid a broker fee and waited a day or two to come back and all this crazy stuff so i don't even know i don't know if he was just telling me that just to get 150 dollars out of me because he didn't want it on the bet on the books he just got the 150 and and that was that so um they checked my car pretty much like two times they made sure everything was good everything's great but yeah man i'm so frustrated with this process so i don't know so all i know next time don't go here first wait in a long line possibly yeah, look at that bird and then um then eventually you'll have to come this way but and the biggest issue i had was the assignment of title so whenever you do a title make sure they don't add a page to it and all that because by them adding a page it confused them they didn't accept it and they manually wrote what was on the assignment on the back of the original title so it's frustrating stuff but whatever on to guatemala well behind me the mexican police just tried to shake me down they kept saying, money, money, dinero, dinero. And I said, nope, I ain't got no money for you. And they kept pointing that money in their hand and kept asking me to give them money. And I said, nah, bruh. I said, I told them straight up, I said, I'm looking for a cajero. I'm the, I'm, I need money. I told them, I need money for food. So they, I kept, they kept asking me like three different ways for me to give them money. And I said, nope. And this is the middle of the night. Well, actually, it's only 6.56. Super dark, though. Daylight savings. And they tried to shake a brother down. Mexico, dog. Mexico, golly. Dang. It's real, boy. It's real. But I don't have any pesos, though. And the car overheated. It's probably the water pump or the thermostat housing. One of the issues that this car has is the thermostat housing usually acts up. So I don't know what I need, but I do have any freeze to put in when it cools down so i don't know how far i can go but it is overheated i just have to sit here and take a nap and wait yikes and so after overheating on the mountain i tell you it was not a good time for me because i didn't have a sim card in mexico i was reliant on the offline maps from google maps 
And what happens is it doesn't really redirect you if there's changes in the road. So up on the mountain, I think close to Veracruz, Mexico, there was a bridge being formed. And what happened was that the road was completely blocked and it would not allow you to go forward because they were waiting on building a bridge. So the offline maps didn't tell me And then I had to go through some type of alternate route to try to get around it as I saw it on the map. But then eventually I got stuck in the mud and then I was there for like three hours until a nice, kind Mexican man decided to help me because he was coming up the same way that I was trying to go down. And so overall, it was tragic. And as you can see, I was stuck here in the cornfields and then I had to take a dump. So what I did. and the cornfield got desecrated by my excrement. And I tell you, it was devastating. I had to use the paper towels I had in the car and I used the rainwater that I collected from the top of my umbrella to moisten those paper towels so I can get a nice clean wipe. But I tell you, it was a big load that came out of me. Well, that's my story. Then after that, I got hungry. Quesadilla con bistec. Yummy. This is called Quesadillas Chepes. This is La Joya Veracruz in Mexico. Pancita de res, mixiote de borogue, tamales, rancheros. They have everything you want. Everything you need. Oh my goodness, it's been raining all day long. Wow. So my quesadilla is done, gracias. So, ¿qué ingredientes es, es dentro? So, es este, ¿qué es eso? Queso. Queso, ¿en qué más? Chicharrón de morona. Okay. This one? ¿Qué más? Bistec de cerdo. Y pollo tinga. Pollo tinga. That one. Boom. Okay. And so, just tres ingredientes? Sí. All right. All right. ¿Cuánto por uno? 20 pesos. 20 pesos. All right, let's go ahead and get that out. Oh man, I can't bite my foot. My first quesadilla in Mexico. All right, gracias. I'm gonna test this out, see how this bad boy tastes. Ooh. No, no necesito. Muchas gracias. No, no necesito cookie. It's okay. Gracias. Gracias. Ooh, cold. All right, let's eat this bad boy. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. Okay, let's see how this tastes. All right, this is my first authentic Mexicano food. They didn't have any rice or anything like that, so we're gonna rock with this. That cheese looks super good. Mm. And it tastes good too. I'm liking the stringy cheese, and then you have the meat inside. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Super tasty meat. They asked me if I wanted salsa. I said no. I wanted to try it just how it is. All right, my first food in Mexico. Let me eat this in peace. All right, I made it to the Mexican border, so I went ahead and closed out my temporary import vehicle permission from the Ben Harcito here, as you can see. I got my $400 back, so now I'm just gonna take a right right over here with the motorcycles and go into Guatemala. They said they're gonna charge me about 25 pesos just to get into Guatemala from Mexico. So there we go, let's go. So after declaring goods at that particular immigration after parking over there now i go here to parqueo importacion and then aduana all right so confusing outing right now so my guy in aduana is here in guatemala says i need to pay 100, 160 quetzales for the temporary importation document but he says i only i only can pay through pago de línea at the bank but the bank is closed right now so one of the security guys right now is gonna help me get there i guess but i don't know it's so confusing i have the money in hand but they won't accept it they won't accept my credit card nor will they accept um 
uh, the money that I already have, that's Quetzales. So I need to get it, pago in la línea en el banco. So they're telling me I have to go inside again and get the boleta de pago first, then go to the bank and do it. So it's like, man, gotta go back and forth. And they wanna charge for copies, but luckily I had all my copies in hand. Right here, this is where I actually pay the 160 from them. I don't have to go outside to a bank or something like that. So the lady went ahead and approved it, even though it was a paper tag. It seems like they have issues with paper tags, but they made it work for me. So overall, the security guards want to take 200 quetzales from me, even though it's only 160 quetzales. So they told me to go in the street and take a left and find a cafe or something. Um, I'm not sure which one. Find the cafe coffee place, and then they'll accept 160 from me. So it's like a little... Not a scam, but like a service. You have to pay a little bit more for the security guards to take your money. Where's the cafe internet? That's what I'm looking for. So I decided to just walk and see what they're talking about. Well, I think this is the cafe internet he was talking about, but it's closed. So whatever, I gotta go back and pay 40 quetzales more. Oh my goodness, I hate having to pay more for stuff that should be what they stated. They say 160, I should be paying 160, not two freaking hundred. All right. And here goes another internet cafe and they're all closed. So whatever, I try to save myself some quetzales, but it seems like all the services are closed. But you know what? I actually like Guatemala. Like this city is happening. I can actually purchase things like Domino's and other foods. Like this, this, Guatemala has more stuff in their small towns than Mexico does. So like in Mexico, I was starving because the small towns didn't have anything. So it is, back to the border, baby. Back to the border. Bien viaje. So I gave him the 200. So all he did was pretty much just go online and pay for it with the Guatemalan bank. I could do it myself, but I don't have a Guatemalan bank account. So that's why they're forced to do it at cafe internet places or at the security guard spot. That's how they do it here. All right, so the ending of everything is they gave me a temporary authorization for 90 days. And they said, if I cancel it, I won't be able to return to Guatemala with the car for another 90 days. But my goal is to essentially register it um, in El Salvador. So this will only be on for one day. All right, on to El Salvador.